thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. It's quite a big crowd and I'm a little intimidated, but I'm also excited. It, it was hard to come back to Dallas because, uh, you know, I, I grew up over here, <laughs> so to speak. Um, first, I'd like to thank a few people. Um, Steve Prechel, who is my um, right and left hand and has helped me build the sculptures and manage my business and uh, help me just grow <laughs> as a human being. And so I'm so grateful, um, Tally Dunn, for honoring me here today and agreeing to show my work. Um, just anecdotally, I'll tell you, we used to dr I lived in, uh, in Denton, and I would drive down to Tally Dunn's shows for 50 minutes with a bunch of other grad students just so we could come and see what she was putting up. So this is like a big effing deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm so proud to show next to Linda because um, you know I've admired her work for a long time as well and um, you know it sort of like makes you think about what people are capable of so that brings me to what this work is about um, I think uh, I will always think of myself as an immigrant and um, I moved here in my mid-twenties. I, I started school here. So in a way, I kind of grew up learning how to be an American from Dallas, Texas, and then moved to Denton. And now I've been to so many different places. And I think um, often people ask me what my work is about. And to tell you honestly, it's about my life. It's about how, how I moved from various places, itinerant shadows. I am like that. I, I have lived this life. I have learned to be here. I've also learned to keep um, a multitude of ideas together, like threads from various places together and tie them in knots so that I can take big concepts and metaphorically try to explain them through my work. Um, it's about moving and displacement. It's about being an immigrant or a refugee. It's about not finding your place when you go to a new place. And then finding kindness, like you guys have come out to show me kindness. And I think that's the, the, the key I want to talk about. Um, my work is about politics, but not overtly. The underlying layers deal with that. Um, I, I, in my in my art practice, I'd like to explore the contrasts or the, you know, contrasts such as uh, feminine and masculine, private and um, public, uh, places that people don't go because uh, sometimes talking about those things can be hard. And in my work, I want to talk about that in, in ways that allow people to come together in a in an intimate way where we all experience the light and the shadows that affect all of us for various reasons, but we are able to find moments of peace, find moments of togetherness, intimacy, and yet be separate. I love works on paper, and uh, so many sculptors Linda Ridgway, one, Anila, another, who are known and recognized for their three-dimensional work, also create really significant bodies of work when it comes to two-dimensional drawing. And uh, could you share with us a little bit about how these were created or how you think about drawing in your practice as, as you alternate between three-dimensional work and more, more two-dimensional, but it also obviously has a layered a layered quality to it. Well, um, all the drawings, as I call them drawings, they're, they're really uh, mixed media works on paper. Um, and I often think about them as uh, sort of fragments that um, kind of deal with the idea of a continuous narrative. 
So it's, um, and sometimes I'll go back and forth between works that I did uh, 10 years ago or even 20 years ago. But I find the, the interesting part about these pieces, especially the ones that are in this show, are really about the contemplation of boundaries that we all live with. Uh, boundaries that affect all of us in some ways or fashion. Sometimes they are self-induced and other times they are induced by other people. Uh, sometimes they are uh, social constructs that we live by and never ask to you know, do away with. Um, I come from a country like Pakistan where uh, women are often repressed. And so um, this work is kind of about the forgotten ghosts. They are uh, people who may not have a voice. And so uh, I, I kind of find that the, 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 the layers deal with that idea of the ghosts. And it also ties in with this idea of uh, us being a, a, a society or a culture of the post-colonial construct. And so um, sometimes, uh, you know, as I'm making the work, I'm often thinking about the ideas of what it means to be authentic. Am I authentic anymore because I live here in the United States? But I was born and raised in Pakistan. Um, and I'm making work about people or women or minorities who may not be from this place. So does that affect who I am? And so I have to live with that duality all the time. And so I, I want these works to also have that duality. Um, the layering is extremely important because, you know, um, sometimes some things seem a certain way to some people. And then when you go up close and question or look closer, it turns out to be a little more complex. And so that idea of complexity is also really important to me. Um, I want to draw people into my, uh, sort of like my I ideas, so that they could also question themselves on what they believe in. And so these works, they kind of deal with that. They, they are cutouts, they are uh, layered in um, mylar and uh, rag paper. They are, uh, I'm using pastels. In that particular piece, I use pastels. And in that piece over there, I use graphite and charcoal and steel dust, um, and all of them also are brought together with sewing, with embroidery, because I think that that shows my presence in every single piece of work. And so it's really important to, it's also the bane of my life because it takes forever to <laughs> stitch anything, you know? And I am quite retentive, so I'll stitch really perfectly. And then whoever works for me has to be like that. And so they just have to be just so. <laughs> and um, I find it fascinating how long it takes. And that's the whole point, that anything worth having takes time. It takes time to get to know other people. It takes time to acquire language skills. It takes time to understand other cultures. And our moment in time right now, the topical conversations we are having politically is so divisive and so anti-immigrants and refugees, I, I worry about the kind of world we are leaving for our kids. And so uh, that's like a really topical situation for my mind, and I feel intensely about what we should do to counteract on that. And I think the biggest reason why I make work that has reflections or shadows or layers is because I want to start a conversation. I want to have people talk about it. Um, you know, often I, I hear my students and other people say, well, we are not going to talk to our grandpa because he's, you know, he's a certain way. But unless you talk about politics and social issues that affect all of us, it's never going to change. And I want that change. I want to help that change. I'm not that change, but I'd like to facilitate that change. And so that's what this work is about. And what about these new works? This is, this is the most recent work. Michelle. Yes, this was done. Uh, <laughs> we had to kind of drive it in. <laughs> uh, this work was, uh, I've been thinking about this particular um, project 
for a while, almost a year. Uh, I think I, I called Tally up to tell her that I was going to do this. And I had um, foam pieces that I cut up and put on the wall. And I painted on them and stuff like that. And it took a while because um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to use traditional Islamic patterns on it or wanted to design new patterns for it. If you notice, the, the refuge piece or the shelter piece that's in the next room is like uh, each side is different. Each surface is a different design, and it all comes together a certain way. It's sort of dense, but when it reflects, it's not very dense. Uh, these are dense, but the reflections are even denser, and you see the ghosts. Yeah. And I, I think that, that that's what's fascinating about uh, this work. But it's also, it kind of got started because of the kids being put in detention on the southern border. And I was really, really upset about it. So this work kind of originated from that. And then I thought, like, putting kids, I, I saw a headline somewhere on Facebook or something that said, is this us putting kids in cages? And I'm like thinking, that's really true. Is this us? Is this <coughs> what humanity has become? Because if you think about putting it in context, we are better educated, better able to take care of ourselves and other people because of where we are now in this world currently. And yet we have these catastrophes around us and we're you know, kind of buying into it. And so these, this piece came from that. I love the way these shadows interact and they become kaleidoscopic in nature. So shadows themselves are getting cut up. They are no longer a whole shadow. And I find that fascinating. I think we can open it up for questions. Sure. Are there any questions? You uh, uh, graduated from North Texas uh, in fiber arts, is that right? Yes. Can you, you mentioned sewing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's, a, there's something like weaving going on here with these shadows? A, a kind of the lamination of one image upon, a upon another one? Or, or am I just looking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I looked at my UNT degree slightly differently because I was able to utilize a lot of different processes in a sing singular manner. Um, that was the one space where I could experiment really quite openly. And so, and I also am fascinated by pattern. And so fibers allowed for those two things to come together. Also, my previous degree from Pakistan is in textile design. And so, um, although um, one of the painting professors said that he would take me on in the painting area, I kind of <coughs> stuck it out in the fibers because I thought that it allowed me more flexibility. Um, as far as using fiber techniques, I think everybody uses fiber techniques. Nowadays, the multidisciplinary kind of attitude that most artists employ kind of has that fiber attitude. Um, some of the best schools are really well known for their fiber um, programs because you, know, you can do soft sculpture, you can do hard sculpture, you can do combination of things. And I find that fascinating. And so I think these works, I mean, I really think this is because of the drawings in space that I do the sculptures. And so this is really a combination of fibers, installation, painting, drawing, everything combined. <laughs> yes. I'm going to ask you a question on your motives. Yes. Uh, you've been here since you were 20, so that was that's fairly like an age where you're, you know, you're still kind of coming together, and you, it's easier for you to kind of um, imbibe more from the place that you moved to. But I see that a lot of your motives are still um, drawn from your heritage. So how do you see, um, can you talk a little bit about that? How do you look into that and, you know, kind of pull together the motives and then still marry them into your life in America and the reaction that you get to them? I think it's more about, like, explaining to people where I come from but where I am now. I think that the important thing to understand is that most people come from somewhere else in this country. And we all bring a wealth of heritages together. And our tendency to exclude certain people or you know, include others based on capitalism or whatever it is, is uh, may have some flaws in it. And 
I can only start from what I know the best. And once I start from that point, I appropriate what I know and understand perfectly, and then I change it to suit me what it has become now. So that's how I would explain uh, or say that I am using motives or patterns from the bigger Islamic world in a, in a sense, but South Asia was not purely Islamic. And so uh, a lot of this stuff comes from South Asia as well. And South Asia was composed of Nepal, Tibet, Pakistan, India, you know, Sri Lanka. So it's, it's, it's a vast continent. And uh, I felt like um, to explain who I am now, I need to reach back and bring it forward. And it's beautiful just to see it rendered like this. It's, it's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think your, uh, your line of shadow design is really incredible. Uh, did, you, did you do any computer modeling of that to actually do this design? Uh, you know, um, uh, like I was old school in the beginning, now I can kick ass on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while, <laughs> but my engineer Steve is like a perfectionist and a master at it. And so the first project that I did that won the intersection, the intersection piece that won the uh, art prize competition in Grand Rapids, the one that was shown at the Dallas Contemporary, we kind of walked around and looked at the shadows and how the shadows were based on different time time of the of the day. That's how we did it in the beginning. Then I projected some on a projector and stuff to see how that worked. But ultimately, that was an experimental work. And it was a work that kind of was growing in my head for years prior to my having the money to make it. And so at that time, we did not use the computer. Although Steve used it to draw the drawings that I gave him to uh, kind of put them in CAD so we could get them cut. Oh yeah, I mean like I tell my students, you got to learn everything that's out there now. Technology is the new way to be.